Animals have the tremendous advantage of mobility over plants. However, this is partially offset by the fact that whereas plants are air-cooled, animals are water-cooled. Water is the primary body coolant for animals. Water is extremely effective at cooling. It takes a lot of heat to evaporate even a small amount of water, and evaporation carries the heat away from the body into the atmosphere. The problem is that in a desert, more water is needed for cooling, but less water is available. So animals need to balance the use of water for cooling with conservation of water to maintain their metabolism and stay alive. Because the use of too much water for cooling has potentially severe consequences, most animals evade heat, i.e. they minimize heat gain whenever possible. They do this by moving. Some animals adjust their ranges or even migrate seasonally, essentially escaping from hot weather altogether. More commonly, animals move around during the day to warmer or cooler microhabitats or into and out of the shade. Some animals burrow because even a few feet underground, the temperature is measurably cooler and varies much less than at the surface. Many animals adjust their active periods from diurnal daytime during cooler seasons to crepuscular, dawn and dusk, or even nocturnal during the summer. The ability to move and make behavioral adaptations is why most desert animals look much like their temperate zone counterparts, whereas desert plants often look significantly different than those elsewhere. Although animals try to minimize their heat gain in the first place, many also have ways of cooling off if they do get hot. A common mechanism is dilating blood vessels near bare skin in ears, for example, rabbits and hares, in tongues, like coyotes, wolves, and dogs, and in nasal passages. The ears, tongue, and similar areas act like radiators to cool the blood. If more cooling is needed, then water begins to be used in evaporative cooling, like sweating and panting. A particularly profound and useful physical adaptation is called hyperthermy, the ability to adjust body temperature up in daytime to reduce the need to use water for cooling. Water plays a central role in cooling, particularly for mammals, and is critical for the survival of all animals. So naturally, there are adaptations to aggressively acquire or conserve water. In larger animals, some of these adaptations are behavioral. For example, finding and exploiting ephemeral water sources. Many of the animal adaptations to avoid heat also have the effect of conserving water. Since the less water is needed for cooling, the more is available for metabolism. But there also have been physical adaptations to conserve this critical resource. Arthropods and some small vertebrates have waxy or fatty surface coatings or layers that essentially seal water in the tissues. Smaller animals, especially reptiles, may estivate or enter a state of torpor with dramatically reduced metabolism when they get dehydrated. 
Many reptiles and some mammals produce concentrated or even solid urine and dry feces to reduce this use of water. And, like with high temperatures, some animals simply can tolerate high levels of dehydration. Some animals, notably desert rodents, exploit alternative water sources. For example, water can be obtained as a metabolic byproduct of food. This isn't just capturing any water actually contained in food, but also capturing water that's generated when nutrients are broken down in the body. Also, many rodents eat seeds, which can absorb water from humidity in the air. They often store seeds in their burrows, which are made more humid by the animal's own respiration. In effect, this recycles exhaled water vapor back into food. In spite of a variety of behavioral and physical adaptations to lack of water, most large animals require periodic access to free-flowing liquid water. This limits their range during dry periods in the desert. We've now finished our brief survey of the many adaptations that plants and animals have made to live in our desert. We've seen that the basic strategies for dealing with high temperatures are to not get hot in the first place, to dissipate heat quickly if you do get hot, or to get used to it. For dealing with the lack of water, the main strategies are to get it when it's available. Once you have it, either use it fast or store it for later. Be as water efficient as possible or simply tolerate dehydration. The Sonoran Desert supports a great diversity of plant and animal life. To survive here successfully, all living things have adapted to the environmental challenges of the desert. Too much heat and too little water. These challenges and the adaptations to them are the basis for the desert ecosystem and shape the unique physical and behavioral changes we observe in native species.